Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing the low poly female anime character. In today's session we'll be working on the hands. This is all part of a series and you can find a link to the playlist in the description. You can also find links to my character course. It's a paid for course and I go into much more depth with detailed characters that are sculpted. We talk about retopology, rigging, painting, animation, and we go right from nothing into a character in a game engine. And this is all from a beginner's perspective, so I try and keep everything really simple. And if you want free courses, you can find other playlists on my channel in the playlist section, so do check that out. Okay, so here's where we got up to last time. We're going to work on the hands. I'll go to front view for this. So one on my numpad. Shortcut keys are down the bottom here. I've tried to make them a more acceptable color. It's tricky though when the background images come back in to see a light color against the light background. So hopefully it's not too offensive this time. So we're working on the hand with my background images in place, which I've made visible by pressing the I there. We can come into the hand section. I'll go to wireframe mode just up here and face mode with three and select the end faces there. Let's just go down to side view and see what we've got to work with. Now this will work fine, but it's actually best to have two cuts across the top. I'll just go back to solid view to show that. So this is going to be the top of the hand, this section here. So before extruding out, I want to position these so that they're in a good location for the hand. So before we start, let's talk about the different types of low poly hands. There's a great example here. Quick shout out to Sketchfab as well. I think Sketchfab is absolutely brilliant for showing off your models and being able to look at the topology of the models. So you can come down to here and you can go to the model inspector. And if I scroll up slightly, you can see the wireframes. The creator graft has kindly put the wireframes on here to show the shapes and the topology. And you can support them by buying it here. And you could just attach these to your character. Sketchfab is a really great place where you can show off your models, sell your models and buy models. And the fact that you can see the topology before you buy is particularly helpful. So I really would encourage you to go and check it out. And also I think Graft has a YouTube channel, so you might want to check them out as well. And they do Blender videos, so well worth checking out. Anyway, there's different types of low poly hands, as you can see here. And I can zoom in with the wheel on my mouse. These are the sort of lowest poly ones down here. And it depends on the complexity of your game or where this character is going or the style that you want it to look like. We'll be going for this sort of level, but I'll also be showing you how you can get to this level as well. It can be helpful just to have one finger available. It gives the character a bit more life than this sort of flat mitten style here, but it doesn't add too much topology. So you can still keep that style and keep optimal in your games. So with those two faces selected back into front view with one on my numpad and E to extrude outwards. I'll go just past the base of the thumb there so I can extrude the thumb out from here. And I just come around to the side and see what that looks like. So it looks all over the place. So side view with three on my numpad and that needs to be brought back into the middle there and it needs to be scaled in the Y. So S then Y to scale that out. Might need to just reposition some of these attach as well, just so they're a bit more level. And what we'll be doing is bringing the thumb out of those areas there. So this is just the hand and finger section. So I'll select those end faces there again, back to front view, E to extrude along to the fingers. Just check around at side view again, make sure it's all okay. I think these faces need to come out just a touch more, so I'll select those two, three on my numpad to side view and grab them out in the Y just a touch to about there and select these two again. One to front view, E to extrude down and just rotate this into position. E to extrude down to the next knuckle and E to extrude down to the last. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a very basic hand there. Let's sort out the thumb first and then we'll sort out the fingers second. So let's go to front view and see where the thumb's coming from. So it's these two faces here, so we can select those. Round to the side and E to extrude those out to around there. I'll move around to the top and I'll select these two edges at the top here. And GG to edge slide, so move them upwards and move those into position. The wrist is looking a bit thin, but we'll do a bit of editing in a moment. I'll bring these edges out slightly. So G to grab, and I'm not going into side view and front view so much now. I'm just naturally trying to find their position. I usually do this in wireframe mode, so I can select the back faces and I'll edit the hand slightly, but that might be a bit tricky for you to see. If I go to wireframe, it can get a bit confusing. So I'll be pressing Alt Z, to go into X-ray mode and back out of X-ray mode every now and again to select the back faces. So let's make the hand slightly wider. So Alt Z and grab those edges and pull them out slightly. 
and then let's bring the thumb out with these two faces here. I'll go to front view for this so I can see where the thumb is. And in fact, I need to bring these two edges down first. So G to grab and move those down and those ones. And then I can grab these two faces, E to extrude and scale them in and grab them down. Probably not quite as far as the thumb there, but that'd be fine. And then E to extrude once more, grab them down and scale them in. Okay, so we've got a rough thumb at the moment. It's looking a little bit misshaped, but we can deal with that through a bit of editing. Now this does depend how high poly you want to go, but we don't really need the loop cut that's going all the way around the middle of the hand here. So we can break it off at the end here and the end here. And to do that, we'll create a pole. So somewhere like there with the knife tool, K for the knife tool and cut there as well. So I've created a pole. Now I can select these edges going around here and they'll stop at the poles. And I can press Control X and we've reduced the polys going all the way around. So let's work with what we've got now and just tidy up a little bit. Going to make the width, the rest a bit wider, coming out there and coming back up to there a bit more. I think I'm going to follow this one through the middle eventually but I'll do that in a moment. And just a little bit of tidying up there so it's more hand shaped. Okay, back into solid mode and I think we need to cut down the middle here. I'll come from this one, so K, knife tool and cut down the center to this point here. Slightly across to the pointing finger, back across here and then maybe into the thumb and press enter. So it's going all the way around. So it'll give me a bit more topology. I can then grab these faces down here and just scale them in slightly. Might have to do that in edge mode. These ones as well. So select that one, control select that one, GG to edge slide. And I do like to use the edge slide tool. And now let's take a look back and see how we're doing. That's not too bad. Just from the side, it's not quite right. And we can select these ones, GG, and slide those back. And these ones as well. So thinking about how the hand and the small finger coming around there, the middle finger sticking out the most. And we can probably select these and just go out a tiny bit this way. The only bit where I'm seeing a bit of distortion is across the top of the thumb there. So we can actually add in with J, a cut there and then we don't see that distortion. So a simple hand there. We can either draw the fingers in, we could even put gloves on our character, which is a common way of getting around the problem of having no fingers, sort of mitten type things. The other thing that's quite common is to have one finger that's sort of movable. For that, you would need to cut down here and all the way around and back again. Then we can go to face mode and delete these faces in here. I'll press full stop on my numpad so I can zoom in on them. Delete the faces. And then I can select this edge here and this edge here and F to fill. And now I can just select the ends and F and F and F and F this way. And then we've got a simple sort of finger and I can then animate and move. Needs just a little bit of smartening up, I think. And Alt said, I think it's a little bit too big as a finger, so I'll move it across to there. So we've got three fingers this side and one finger this side. It's about there, I think. Might want to flesh the fingers out a bit more so we can have a cut coming around here. And that gives a bit more curve to the fingers. So we can move this out just a touch like that. I could, in fact, move these in slightly, to give them a bit more roundedness. It does help sometimes if you have that one finger that can move. It gives a little bit more life to your characters rather than just a flat hand but it depends how far you want to go with the animation. Okay, so that's making hands with a few tips there for you. Again, comment below with any thoughts you might have. I hope you're still enjoying the series and I'll see you next time.